Good morning, and thank you for joining today's program. In Solidarity, In Strength is a webinar series launched by the Jewish Federation of Greater Los Angeles to support Israel and the Jewish community during this historic crisis. Through weekly webinars, participants gain an insider's perspective on Israeli resilience, the recent surge in anti-Semitism, firsthand accounts of those impacted by the war, the Jewish community's organizing, and much more. This educational series features subject matter experts who will provide ongoing learning opportunities to make us more informed as we collectively work to support Israel. Today's webinar, Campus Antisemitism, Supporting Our Jewish Students, hosted by the Jewish Federation of Greater Los Angeles. Since the Hamas attack on October 7th, Jewish students on college campuses across the country have experienced an alarming rise of antisemitism. Today, we will hear firsthand accounts from campus leadership and students about how this crisis is impacting student life. Learn how the Jewish Federation is responding and ju supporting Jewish college students across Los Angeles. We invite you to submit questions throughout this morning's conversation using the webinar's Q&A function, and our moderator will direct them to today's panelists. Please welcome Robert Henlisch, Vice President of Israel Education and Advocacy for the Jewish Federation of Greater Los Angeles. Thank you. Today we have three wonderful panelists. Our first one is Dave Kohn, the Executive Director of USC Hillel. And under Dave's leadership, USC Hillel has cemented itself as a hub of innovation, supporting its students with holistic well-being initiatives and success in student engagement. Next, we have Brandon Tavacoli, who is a junior at USC and a double major in business administration and public policy and law. He is an active student leader, serving as a student government senator and president of Trojans for Israel, a bipartisan student organization dedicated to strengthening the U.S.-Israel relationship. And finally, Jasmine Bruchim, who currently serves as the Sylvia Price Campus Impact Network Program Manager at the Jewish Federation of Greater Los Angeles. And Jasmine is a former president of Bruins for Israel at UCLA. Thank you, everybody, for joining us this morning. Brandon, I, I want to start with you. Obviously, Jewish students are feeling a lot right now around the United States and even here in Los Angeles. Can you speak to the Jewish student experience right now? What is it feeling like since October 7th? And do you have any recommendations for both Jewish student leaders and community leaders? Well, thank you so much to the Federation for including me. You know, the Federation has been an institution and has made an indelible mark on the history of uh, the Jewish community in Los Angeles. And before I begin with my answer, I just want to recognize that uh, there is another community, another story that's represented in this panel that is indelible to the history of the Jewish community in Los Angeles, and that is the story of Persian Jewish refugees. And I'd like to recognize the fact that two out of the three panelists today are products of Persian Jewish refugees. So thank you for that. Um, look, Jewish Trojans just want to be normal students. We want to worry about our finance midterm next week. We want to worry about the essay that we're procrastinating to write. We want to worry about the job application we need to submit and the LSAT score. Since October the 7th, no Jewish student has been able to feel like a normal student. We're walking on campus, looking over our shoulder for the next anti-Israel demonstration or flyer. We're walking into class, removing our Judaica and heads down as we pass by our professor. The Jewish community, Jewish students have a unique connection to the Israeli people. We've made lifelong friends on Birthright Israel, on study abroad programs in Israel and on summer internships. And so we are mourning in a unique way as our friends are serving in the IDF on the front lines or have been killed in the last 30 days. And on campus, our peers are responding with two things. One, 
Prove it. Prove to us that your friend just died in Israel. Prove to us that your friend is stuck in a bomb shelter for the last 24 hours. Prove it to us. Or even worse, too, guess what? You and your friend deserve it. So it's been very difficult for students on campus. And we've been rocked and shattered in the last couple of weeks. Now, in terms of recommendations for the community and for student leadership, I have three rules of thumb that I think are really important. Number one is that no one campus is the same. Jewish advocacy and Israel advocacy is a product of campus culture. So the strategies, methods, programs, events that work to elevate and safeguard Jewish voices on campus and counter the anti-Israel narratives may work on one campus, but may not work on the other campus. So it can't take a uh, one size fits all approach. Two, I would say is that the organized Jewish community and the community at large need to be more unequivocal, more forceful, vigilant about articulating the clear red lines of the Jewish community. The Jewish community have the right and responsibility to define what it means to be an anti-Semite, to define how Israel rhetoric veers into anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism. So when our Jewish leadership are able to articulate clearly exactly what those red lines are and do it in a way that is reflective of the nuances of in-university policy, both our administrators, other leaders in other capacities, and even our elected officials are able to be more aware of what those red lines are and more empowered uh, to step in and act. And then three, I would say is, you know, oftentimes I've been in this space for the last two years. I hear uh, the phrase in reference to students that you're the next generation of student leaders. And so today I'm going to push back on that notion. You know, student leaders are not only the future generation of leaders. We are the present generation of leaders. Jewish students want to be active in the community today. We want to be engaged with our community partners today. We want to be part of shaping the national conversation around Israel and Israel advocacy today. And uh, we truly believe that we need a seat at the table today. So my call to the community, the Jewish community is give us the opportunity to lead not only tomorrow, uh, but today. And I think with this program, the Federation is making an incredible down payment on that commitment. And I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks so much, Brandon, for your insights and your leadership that is happening right now. You're making a big difference. Thank you. Dave, as a Jewish professional on campus, um, you have a lot of insights on things and challenges that are happening on the ground that are often out of public view, right? We're seeing a lot in the media, on social media, big national reports. But can you tell us a little bit about the things on the ground that the public does not see? Thank you, Robert. And I wanna echo Brandon's gratitude to the Federation for hosting this important session uh, for its uh, immersive partnership with us. It's an indispensable relationship uh, to Jasmine for your uh, hands-on involvement. And I know we're going to hear more about your work on this call. Um, there are so many ways that we're in this together and we're grateful. And of course, it's always an honor to make sure that our students are heard loudly and clearly. And to that end, I'm so grateful to Brandon for being here alongside me and and to 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 continuing to be a happy warrior for our people in these difficult times. Um, and to that question, Robert, I'm glad we're starting here because I think um, the community gets windows into campus life in often 
um, often limited ways through social media, through national media reports. Uh, and certainly since October 7th, there has been a justified level of interest in what takes place on campus and how it's reflective of how society is grappling with these issues. Um, but I wanted to start here because I think it's important to, to emphasize that that is only a pinhole view of the Jewish campus experience, especially over the last month. You know, Brandon emphasized this in his response as well, how it feels to walk around campus, students wondering when they're gonna encounter hostility, you know, someone looking askance, an inappropriate comment, uh, a brush off from a member of the faculty, or just the flood of insensitive, you know, bordering on insensitive to outright anti-Semitic rhetoric that's quickly adopted and widespread, proliferated on social media, amplified on social media, uh, copied and pasted into statements and used and reused. And it's at a scale that I've never seen before. So when you see an incident on social media, that incident is of real concern to us. And it's one of the, it's one of the, one of the aspects that we're dealing with, but Hillel's role is to support students directly. And since October 7th, we have been around the clock, hand in hand with students at a volume again, that I really truly believe has never been reached before, because this is not an opt in conflict at this point, right? Every Jewish student is impacted. Any Jewish student who identifies as Jewish is going to be encountering this right now. Uh, and that is, that's magnified the scale dramatically, right? So we're very concerned with making sure that students know their options, understand how the, they can get involved in organizing, find support within the community, lean on Hillel as a resource uh, in every holistic comprehensive sense, and also make sure that we address these issues with those who have the influence uh, to improve the culture along the way. Um, but, but that's what we're seeing on the ground is, is and that, that can't be captured purely in media reports or in a flashpoint because at USC, thankfully, um, that I know this feels uh, this is this is a kind of a warped definition of success, to be honest, right? We don't have daily protests at USC. We maybe have weekly protests. We don't have a thousand people at our pro-Palestinian rally. We have a hundred. Those are our strange definitions of success. Uh, and I think what gets lost in the in the in the in the undertow a little bit of this conversation when we do focus so heavily on rallies and protests and, and public statement language is just that everyday experience of the individual Jewish student who just wants to comfortably go to class, who doesn't want to have to 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 wonder if they're going to, you know, without warning, be the subject of of a rhetorical attack. Uh, and that's why Hillel's here. Hillel's here to make sure students know they're not alone. Thank you, Dave, for all that you're doing for Jewish students at USC and for those insights. Um, next, we'll go to Jasmine. Jasmine, great to have you. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your past experience doing campus work and the goals of the new initiative of the Jewish Federation called the Campus Impact Network? And why is this Campus Impact Network needed now more than ever? Sure, good morning, everybody. It's an honor to be here today. Um, I'd like to begin that it really wasn't too long ago that I was in Brandon's shoes, granted at his rival school down the road over at UCLA. Um, at my time at UCLA, I was honored to serve as the president of Bruins for Israel and the chair at Hillel International's Israel Leadership Network. So my work has extended through Hillel International to over 100 college campuses in the United States. So I'm very familiar with what has been going on, what has transpired on college campuses just in June of last year when I graduated, but still today in my work. But I would, what I would like to highlight is that what Brandon and I, the difference, the key difference right now is that what he's dealing with is not what I dealt with. At that point, when I was on college campuses, anti-Semitism was a whisper. It was there. And I don't want to say that it didn't exist, but it was there. But I felt like there wasn't this emboldened mob mentality that we are now seeing. There it almost feels like there's a right for people to be anti-Semitic on campus. There's a justification behind it. They're not whispering, they're shouting. And it's concerning. And I think it's unprecedented. And I want to give 
so much credit to the students who are on campuses. Like Brandon said, they should be worried about their midterm exam next week. But what they're worried about is, can I have the Star of David on my necklace? So I think the Jewish Federation recognized that as a problem. I knew that I wanted to start an organ in a Jewish organization right after I began um, college. I started this job mid-September. Um, three weeks into the job, October 7th happened. And I knew that I would be working with college students, but I really didn't know how important this work was going to be, how much of a priority it was going to be. And that's why Campus Impact Network was created and launched right after October 7th. So what is Campus Impact Network? It is an initiative that's on the ground. My job is to be with students. Often three times a week, I'm out of the office. I'm uniting LA campuses. While no school is the same, I think there is power in numbers. So we're not here to isolate um, our greater LA schools, but we're here to bring them together. We're here to support them, listen to their stories, take them out for a simple coffee, understand that their messages are being amplified at the highest levels of the Federation. And I, my role is to elevate that Jewish experience. But we also want Jewish students to take action. We want them to be proud Jews. And through trainings that the Campus Impact Network has put on, we're working in partnership with the Hillels and Chabad's on campus. So our goal really is to make students empowered to build allies and coalitions. And I think this work could not be more important. And um, I'm really, really honored. I tell Brandon all the time, he's a huge inspiration to me. And I'm really lucky to be working here. I think we need to all rally around our students and the time is now. Thank you, Jasmine. We're really blessed to have you here at, at the Jewish Federation and taking the lead of this Campus Impact Network and uh, inspiring our students. Just thank you for all that you're doing. Um, let's go back to Brandon. Brandon, you're your student government senator at USC. Can you tell us about some of the challenges and successes you're having uh, in this role at this moment? Thanks. So. Uh, yeah, as you mentioned, I currently serve as an undergraduate student government senator and as president of Children's for Israel, uh, a bipartisan pro-Israel political advocacy group closely affiliated with APAC. Um, so oh, I'm at a challenging place right now with the intersection of my leadership responsibilities. But, you know, I ran on being a champion for Jewish students. And after October the 7th, I'm going to, you know, reap the benefits and bear the brunt of the costs of that commitment. Um, in the wake of the October 7th, let me give you some examples um, of benefits and challenges. In the wake of the October 7th attack, the Middle East North African Student Assembly who purports itself to represent all students that identify with the MENA region, released a statement that mourned the loss of innocent civilians in, quote, Gaza and the West Bank, intentionally leaving the word Israel out of their statement. So I mobilized our Senate and a majority of us, Jewish and non-Jewish senators, signed onto a letter that called out this student assembly, which gets around $25,000 of our budget, asking them to apologize for not living up to their full potential of creating a safe space for Israeli students who should be allowed to express their intersectional identity in that space and for Jewish students like me who are from the Middle East but don't feel comfortable when there are statements that don't represent our perspective or our views or our feelings. So that letter resulted in a new statement that was released that used the word Israel that recognized the state of Israel and it followed a commitment by the executives to create a event, an event next semester that 
would bring together Jewish students from the MENA region and Israeli students to share their uh, culture with their non-Jewish counterparts in the region. I'm thinking it's going to be a buffet of food, a potluck, because who who the best way to share your culture is through food. Um, but the details of that will be sorted out next semester. But again, I mean, in the last week, we have seen uh, weekly protests. We have seen aggression and hostility uh, towards Israel transition and, uh, you know, move to, you know, targeting individual Jewish students who are very involved with institutions on our campus. So personally, let me give you uh, an example of that. We saw a protest a couple of weeks ago where they sent 80 of those anti-Israel protesters into the student government meeting to target and question me as a vocal pro-Israel student and as an author of a bill that would create a student representative for the Jewish community, just like there are for other minority communities on this campus. Um, and that moved and transformed into last week seeing a couple of protesters come in and call for my resignation and removal and uh, the start of an impeachment inquiry into my service on the student government on the basis that my connection to the Jewish community is a quote, conflict of interest. So eerily similar to the um, dual loyalties, textbook anti-Semitism that Jews faced throughout history. So again, I just wanna be clear that these calls will, they'll never win uh, because we have very strong relationships with um, the student government, with our non-Jewish pro-Israel activists in the student government and friends. But beyond me, there are also other examples of, for example, there's a Jewish student who wrote a pro-Israel op-ed for the Daily Trojan, our student newspaper, and her name was doxxed on flyers all across campus. We have another student who is a reporter for the School of Communications, Annenberg School of Communications, and he has been covering this in a very objective light, highlighting both Palestinian and Israeli perspectives. And at a protest last week, the uh, students went outside of the School of Communications and in their chants, yelled out his name. So the largest challenge, I think Jazzy said it really well, is that there's this mob mentality that, you know, the, the anti-Israel noisemakers are pressuring our institutions to isolate individuals who are Jewish and who have close connections to the state of Israel. But honestly, they're, they're not going to win because we have such incredible resources here and our leadership mobilizes really well. Brandon, I can only imagine how difficult that must be. And we wanna thank you for your strength and to let you know and other Jewish student leaders all over LA and the United States that you're not alone in this and we will make sure that you're supported. You have every right to be at the table as a student leader supporting Israel and as a Jew. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Brandon, for staying strong. Dave, let's go back to you. Um, every university's response has been different and, and we all know that leadership matters in a very, very big way. Can you get us into the understanding of university leadership um, and how you've approached working with them at your campus? Absolutely, and I wanna first, I just, I just wanna, celebrate Brandon again for being so open and vulnerable. These are hard stories to share. Uh, and I mean, another theme, whether it was for Brandon's experience in, in these recent USG meetings or for the other students he mentioned, uh, we're one of the places they, they turned and that they knew they could come to, right? And after the protest, that reporter from Annenberg Media was sitting here with us trying to figure out how to get the support um, that could help could help him respond responsibly. That's what we're here doing. 
you know, being here with students is always our number one purpose. And our, our primary goal is to support them. And as Hillel on a campus, working very closely with the leadership of our university, with the administration of our university is, is, is among the most important functions we serve in ensuring that we can have a strong Jewish presence at USC and that the university continually understands what its responsibility it is, is to serve as our partners in doing that. And that's not something that began on October 7th, and it's not something that will end with this crisis. We dedicate an incredible amount of energy to building full and rich relationships, not only with the university president, who is only one person, but with the leadership team across areas of student services and supports in offices, including Student Life or Student Affairs, the Academic Affairs Office, the Title IX Office, the Religious Life Office. There are a ton of, 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 there's a web of support that's out there. And as that responsible partner and the voice of the Jewish community on campus, it's our job to make sure that we are visible, under deeply understood, and that our concerns therefore resonate with the campus leadership, especially in times of crisis. Uh, I see it as, as a real privilege to have the chance to work with those partners at a university like ours. Uh, and we know that it's very difficult to respond perfectly to these incidents. And a lot of focus understandably goes on to the messaging that university leaders and top uh, top officials send um, when, when crises arise. Uh, that's something we're continuing to work with our administration on doing its best uh, doing its best on, including later this morning by meeting with the president and her leadership team with myself and the board of directors of USC Hillel. Uh, so we are that voice in the room trying to work closely with them. But I also wanna emphasize, and I mentioned just how extensive this network is, that beyond the statement that a president makes, there are so many aspects to a comprehensive university response to the crisis like this. And I'm genuinely proud and deeply grateful for how that look, has looked on the ground on our campus since October 7th. Every event, every event that happens on this campus, that has happened on this campus since October 7th, that has had even the the shred of a possibility of becoming contentious or becoming or you know or where there's a any risk at all where there could could be a risk to student safety has been heavily secured at no additional cost by our university department of public safety there's coordination with our university event services team with our religious life office um, we we've largely been able to avoid the types of unexpected surprises uh, and 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 curveballs coming at us that's allowed us to prepare to to keep students safe, um, and to keep them physically safe. Not to downplay the sense of fear and anxiety that I believe is 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 very real that our students are going through, uh, and also to make sure there's a you know a full and well publicized menu of of resources students can activate either around mental health and wellness and their personal well-being and counseling, uh, which Hillel is obviously very active in as well, uh, to being able to file and report incidents when there are incidents with students, faculty, or other members of the campus community so that there's a responsible uh, follow-up and the potential for uh, for consequences when bad action takes place. Um, there's, there's a really, really intensive on-the-ground response that's happening uh, and that only happens as effectively as it has here because we work so closely and comprehensively with our university partners. Uh, and the Federation also worked very closely with our Hillel to produce an event this week, which had been months and months to years in the planning, but the timing of which couldn't have been more critical. Uh, a Western Region Summit on Anti-Semitism in Higher Education, which was attended by over 100 university administrators from across the West Coast to help continue that work to educate them on the nature of these challenges, on Jewish identity, on the specific and 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 Jewish centric issues that that are of most concern to us and to help them develop tools and help all of us develop shared understanding about what will be most effective in these scenarios. And we spent two full days with this group diving into the issues, solutions, policy, law, communications, all the areas of an effective response. Um, so, you know, not all of this can be captured in a presidential statement. I wish it could. Uh, and and, and we're, we're working to make sure that that messaging continues to 
to iterate and improve and that we can strive higher to make sure that we project both to the broader student community and to the to the broader Jewish world that these campuses are places where we have true partners. Uh, but Hillel is is the central player in ensuring that that network uh, functions at its best. Thank you, Dave. I was able to attend the conference yesterday, and I can tell you, I think everybody left feeling they understood anti-Semitism, the Jewish experience, and what Jewish students are going through right now and why they're feeling the ways that they do and ways to respond. So thank you again for your leadership on that. Um, let's go to Jasmine. Um, after talking to so many students, Jasmine, um, what do you think they need the most right now during this crisis? Yeah, it's a great question. And I think a really important one. And I want to begin with using the word accountability. Jewish students who are being targeted, dehumanized, demoralized by a certain club on campus or just by a student walking by on class, those students need to be held accountable. And I want to implore campuses, I want to implore students to know that they don't have to feel this way, that there are steps that they can take to ensure accountability is upheld. And that begins with reading codes of conduct that schools put in place, right? If you are being harassed, we need to ensure that accountability is upheld. There are ways to ensure that happens. And I think reading the codes of conduct is one, meeting with your Hillel directors, meeting with chancellors and people who, for example, at the UC system, there are UC regions, there's public comment. You can find time to go there and share in 60 seconds what it feels like to be a Jewish student on campus. So I think accountability is one and the Campus Impact Network um, understands that we want students to feel that their voices are being heard. Um, I know that I'm helping organize students to go to UC Regents meeting. They also need support, right? It's this has always been the case on college campuses where it feels like Jewish students are lacking allies. And it doesn't have to be this way. I know that it does feel that way, but there are clubs on campus. And if we can do the appropriate outreach, if we can do the appropriate coalition building, um, making our rallies with other partners, I think that support from other clubs on campus is what Jewish students are looking for. And then lastly, really at the highest level, thinking about what does it mean? What does it look like to maybe close our textbooks at one point to college campuses to ensure that there is a safe and bright future for Jewish students on campus? And I know that I've spoken to many who have come to me and said, what are our donors doing? What are we doing to ensure safety? So I think these three ideas of accountability support and are really, really crucial at this moment. But Above all, they want to be recognized. They want to feel like they're human walking on their college campuses. Um, I've heard one too many stories where it's really, really tough. And on the other end, one too many stories, I mean, too many amazing stories where Jewish students are so proud to be Jewish in this moment, to go on their college campus, to organize a rally. I know Brandon has one later today with USC. Um, over at UCLA, there was about 500 students organizing. So things are happening, but we need to kind of get our ducks in a row in rallying around our Jewish students. Yeah, thanks for empowering our young students, Jasmine, and all that you do. And along those lines, we'll go to Brandon. Obviously, there's a lot of concern, parents and grandparents, current students, Brandon, future students who are in high school right now. And how can you empower them? Or what, what words of wisdom would you say uh, to them during this time of crisis at campuses? So while our brothers and sisters in Israel are on the front lines of a war with Hamas. Students on campus are on the front lines of a propaganda war against Israel. But Jewish students are demonstrating the essence of Jewish peoplehood right now. And that is resilience in the face of hardship and hostility. Jewish students at USC and across the country 
are powerfully making the case for Israel, are meaningfully expressing their Jewish identity, and they're empowered to do so with the resources that they have. At USC, in the wake of the October 7th attack, we hosted a vigil at the center of campus where 350 students, Jewish and non-Jewish, came to mourn, to cry, draped in blue and white. Last week, we, at the center of campus, did an, an exhibition for the 240 hostages that are held in Israel, where 250 pictures of the hostages were laid at the center of campus and a balloon was attached to each and every one of them. Today, as Jazzy said, we're hosting a solidarity program in commemoration of the 30 days since the attack. And just this weekend, just this weekend, 135 students nationwide, 30 of them from Los Angeles, including UCLA and USC, just came back from Washington, D.C., where in partnership with APAC lobbied our members of Congress on their experience on campus and on the $14.3 billion aid package for Israel. So what I would ask of community leaders, what I would ask of parents, grandparents, and students is just to be active and engaged on campus to learn about the programs and initiatives of the students that are on their campus and just check in and thank them for their work. Thank them. Thank them for their leadership because that's the best way that we can make students feel refreshed and strengthened and empowered to keep fighting for Israel um, and to be the proud Jew that their families have cultivated them to be. Thank you so much, Brandon. And along those lines, Dave, I think every single Jew in Los Angeles feels like they want to do something to yeah. help these young students, to help what's going on on college campuses. Um, what are a few productive ways that uh, everybody in LA can, can make a difference and make an impact for students right now? Thank you. And, and you've already taken a first important step by being at this session with us today. I think the first the first and most important way to deepen your involvement is to engage in the conversation, to learn with, with resources that you can trust, to read widely and understand these issues more deeply, uh, because we need um, you know, we need a whole, you know, we need ranks and ranks of community members who, who, who have taken the time and effort to understand these issues well enough to engage with them productively and to help us advance the cause of Jewish students and, and of the campus climate for them with our university leadership and with all of the key players involved. So thank you for being here today. That's crucial. The second piece is to get involved with Hillel on campus, on a campus that is of deep meaning to you. There are a lot of ways to do that, uh, and it'll depend on the campus and the Hillel, but all of us are surrounded by these concentric circles of communal support, of this growing village that our students really do feel the presence of that village. And I really appreciated what Brandon said, the importance of expressing gratitude and pride and, and conveying your support that way uh, can't be understated because the Jewish future is one that we have to build on resilience, hope, transcending these hard moments. Uh, I don't believe that any of us want to define our Jewish identity through pain, suffering, and trauma and challenge. Uh, we can't be also, you know, we can't pretend that's not part of the Jewish story. But it's, it's, it would be, it would be a tremendous loss if we allowed that to become our story. We need hopeful voices, supportive voices, grateful voices to get involved in their campus Hillel's and to participate in these conversations and to offer their support. And the third piece, the third piece is to invest. I'm gonna be honest, this has been one of the most difficult months of my career. I have seen our team rise to the occasion and, and serve over capacity in ways that I find deeply inspiring. And we can only do it if we are uh, not 
looking over our own shoulders in a different way to find the next dollar to be able to operate at our fullest. Uh, Jasmine mentioned earlier the question about uh, you know having universities notice when we when we vote with our pocketbooks, and I do think that's a a value a valid and valuable communal question here of when uh, university leaders might need to to feel that pain in order to in order to to respond at the level that we hope. But the last thing we need from our community is to disengage with investing in campus life. And Hillel is a destination where you can do that and know that your phil philanthropy is supporting uh, the outcomes we're seeking for students and 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 the the holy work that we all do to make students uh, safe, supported, and and thriving on campus. So I do hope that after you scan that QR code in Robert's box and make sure that you've given to your fullest to support the Federation's emergency campaign for Israel, that your next stop is the website of whatever campus is Hillel you care most about to make an impact with us and to make sure that we can continue doing this this crucial work on the front lines uh, with the, the generation, as Brandon would say, not the next generation, but this generation of Jewish leaders. Thanks, Dave. You're, you're reminding me of Rabbi Jonathan Sachs' statement, and I'll paraphrase it. Um, the best response to anti-Semitism is to be prouder Jews and embrace our, our Judaism right now. And I think uh, your call to support our Jewish organizations uh, is the most important thing we can do to help build um, our programming and support for our young Jewish students. So thank you for that reminder, Dave. And back to you, Jasmine. Uh, you're a recent college graduate of UCLA, and now you're the program manager of the Campus Impact Network here at the Jewish Federation. What does this work mean to you? And you know, if you had to inspire these young students on college campuses right now, what would you say to them? This work means everything to me. Spearheading the Campus Impact Network is an inspiration for me to work with so closely with college students who are around my age um, and who are fighting the fight on campus that I fought about a few months ago. Um, I resonate, I understand, I am with them all the time. They, they have my cell number, I am close in contact. And I think that the Federation choosing to launch this uh, network shows how much of a priority the safety of Jewish students is. And something I want to remind Jewish students of is um, we've been here before, right? Like how Brandon has touched on that. Jewish history attests that we have gone through every single challenge that has come our way. Am Yisrael Chai, the Jewish people live, even on college campuses where you are hearing chants of the opposite, right? Calls for intifada, calls for free Palestine from the river to the sea. I want to remind you that that is our legacy on campuses is that Am Yisrael Chai, we will forge on, we will push on. You do not have to fight this alone. Um, use your resources, use your voice, um, go to your Hillel's, go to your Chabad's, come to the Federation. You know that the Campus Impact Network exists. We're here to serve you. Um, we're here to unite college campuses. And um, I just want to finally add that, like Brandon touched on, my parents left Iran right before the Islamic regime. And for me, this feels really personal, right? They didn't really have a fight when they left. I know their country quickly got took an taken over. But now I feel like I'm finishing off their fight in a really powerful way. Um, and as though, although it's the worst it's ever been right now, and it feels that way, it really is the best. We have the IDF defending our country. We have so many resources for Jewish students. So do not feel isolated. These are going to be trying times, but we will persevere through them all. So, yeah, well said, Jasmine. I think sometimes it's easy to get caught up in a certain event or two that, that's happening on campuses that can feel like, wow, that's happening everywhere in a big way. And, and it is in certain ways and in certain ways it's not. But uh, to remind everybody that our, our community is incredibly strong. We have allies everywhere and thank goodness, a lot of uh, government support at this time and much more to be grateful for despite this difficult time um, to, to remind us of, our, of the strength that we do have. So thanks. So, Thank you for that, Jasmine. Um, we're going to move to a general Q&A, and we have some from our audience. 
Um, so I'll open it up to all, all three of you. So feel free to, to chime in. If, if um, all three of you want to answer the same question, feel free to do so. Um, I'll start with this one. It seems sometimes on college campuses that Israel's narrative or the Jewish experience isn't really talked about, isn't really known. Um, often we're seeing a lot of Palestinian narratives from professors and pro-Palestinian groups. What are some ways that you think we can do better uh, right now to under to help people, help students um, and professors and anybody on a college campus understand the Jewish experience, understand um, Israel, understand a nuanced understanding of Israel and uh, Jewish history and the Jewish narrative and Israel's narrative? What do you think we can do? How can we do it better? I can jump in on that one. Um, I think academia institutions are a really incredible place to start, right? Students are going to learn from the best of the best at whatever school that they choose. And I think that granted that that is the structure of a university institution is to teach and empower and uplift, it should be called upon universities to facilitate a academia moment, right? To learn about what really has transpired in the Jewish history, to understand the Palestinian struggles and challenges. And I think that if we can shift campus from being less hostile and more what campuses were created to do was to serve and educate students, and whether that takes partnerships with your chancellors and asking them to help facilitate that or even lower levels of your provost, um, working with your Hillels to bring a speaker where we can actually utilize what institutions were created for to help us launch a moment of understanding and um, coalition building. So I think I, I understand that feeling that oftentimes it feels like the Israeli narrative or the Jewish narrative is slipping through our hands, but it doesn't have to be this way. Schools are, this is a moment in history. And I think they're across the country, like Brandon said, it's not a one size fit all, but what is a one size fit all on college campuses is that we're here to educate and teach. So partnering by bringing a speaker and I think that's one way to start and to get our story out there and uplift our voices and what is the history of the Jewish people. Um, so, yeah. I just, I feel like this is an, a really critical time to add that um, the relationship building we do in between crises and with students and uh, university community members of every identity is the, the long-term silver bullet alongside it education programs like those that Jasmine was just talking about, right? The examples that Brandon gave earlier on this call are incredibly painful. And when I hear them, I can't also help but think about all the progress we've made, right? Four years ago, the Manasseh student organization that Brandon talked about getting on the same page with, having them recognize Israel and seeking coexistence would have been releasing statement after statement that was antagonistic to us, right? Four years ago, as we unfortunately know full well, when that call came that Brandon should step aside, it would have been potentially adopted and embraced instead of quashed with a strong support, not only from other Jewish students in the Jewish community, but from allies who we've spent the energy building uh, over time. So so that, that immersive work of relationship building and coalition and alliances, um, you know, that happens both through education and through you know, being willing to spend that time over years. Yeah, I would add one thing. I think the bottom line is Jewish students, Jewish institutions need to empower students on the ground to build personal relationships, to be uncomfortable with sharing their experience with other people. But that has to start off with building a personal relationship outside of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, outside of Jewish identity, outside of Palestinian identity. It has to be focused on really building a true friendship grounded in values, grounded in humor, grounded in things that are outside of um, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict before we get to those more difficult conversations, because in that way you can establish a level of trust 
and establish a level of credibility while you have those very difficult conversations. Yeah, that's well well said, Brennan. I, I think going back to the idea of relationships, I remember when I was in college, uh, I was the first Jew that uh, most people met in their whole life. And they, they were, these were Californians. And we have to remember, you know, we're a small people, you know, 2% of the United States. And, and how many people have maybe never met a Jew in their whole life? So I think when we uh, make those relationships and build those friendships and being able to articulate who the Jewish people are, our values, um, an understanding of our Jewish history in Israel um, is crucial. So thank you for uh, reminding us of that, Brandon. Um, we might have time for one more question. Um, this one is asking, what resources are available to students who want to get involved with advocating for Israel and combating anti-Semitism right now? I'll start on this one only because I, I might need to hop up just a few moments early to join my call with uh, with the university president. And I want to thank everyone again for being here today and for all of your partnership in this effort. Fortunately, there's a multitude of resources and our community cares so much about this issue and has developed so many tools. Um, uh, Hillel, of course, is the central address for Jewish life on campus, and we work with a multitude of partners to help students identify the pathways that will be meaningful to them, whether that's through the Federation and the Campus Impact Network, which we've been talking about in this call, uh, through partnerships with uh, especially on educational efforts with the Anti-Defamation League, the American, Jew American Jewish Committee. You know, Brandon is our Trojans for Israel president, which works closely on advocacy with APAC. Um, you know, there, there are so many different ways to take this issue on that it's hard to give a single answer, except that if, if, if we're able to meet with a student and understand their their passion and interest and where they want to make that difference, we can help match them up with resources. And I've only just scratched the service. I, I could I could easily rattle off another 10 or 15 organizational partners who do a blend of training, educational resource sharing, organizing, mentorship. Um, we have those tools. And, and what we need to do is mobilize students and inspire students uh, and, and pull students closer so that they, they are committed with us to doing this work. Great. Well, our time is coming to an end, and, and I want to thank each and every one of you for being here, um, despite this hard time that we're all going through after October 7th, and especially for Jewish college students. Each and every one of you have given us hope, have inspired us, and we're so, so grateful for all that you're doing for our community and our students. So Thank you, Jasmine. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Brandon. And I want to thank all of you for tuning in today in our latest webinar in our In Solidarity, In Strength webinar series. And to support the efforts being made on the grounds in Israel, please contribute to the Jewish Federation of Greater Los Angeles' Israel Emergency Fund. To make your gift today, please visit jewishla.org backslash Israel crisis. Thank you everyone for being here with prayers and for peace and shalom, wishing you all a great rest of your day. Thank you.